Arab Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Uh, this evening, we're going to get into the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, we are at that season. It's uh, June the 8th today, 2019. And for the next three days, uh, the Feast of Shavuot, as we say in Hebrew, will be celebrated mainly amongst the Jewish people around the world. And um, uh, we're kind of getting into this message tonight uh, because not only the fact that we're in that season, but also we're wanting uh, our, our friends all over the world to recognize the fulfillment of Shavuot, the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, I know I was listening to the other day, uh, uh, Brother Paul Begley had on Mark Biltz, and they were talking about the, the, the Feast of Pentecost, and Mark had made the comment that the Feast of, uh, Feast of uh, Pentecost had been celebrated amongst the Jewish people 1,500 years before the book of Acts was ever written. Well, that's all fine and good, but the, the, the most important part, though, is the fact that when Pentecost came, it was a fulfillment of Shavuot. It was Pentecost being fulfilled in a way that maybe many people have no idea uh, of how this was being fulfilled. We're going to talk about that tonight, and, uh, and listen... Uh, I'm sure maybe Mark and maybe even Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira might be listening to this broadcast tonight. So let me just say this, and I try to always say this, you know, I don't hate you, brothers. I don't have anything against you uh, other than the fact that I don't like what I see going on. Uh, and I realize that you guys may believe passionately that you are fulfilling biblical scriptures uh, by taking the Sephardic Jews that, uh, they're, 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 excuse me, the, the Sephardim that are descendant from the Inquisition, which many of them are believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ that live in South America, and you're trying to pull them back into Judaism, so to speak. And uh, to me, that's, that's just, that's not wise at all. And of course, also saying that uh, that, you know, that the Jewish people, you've got this document, you're having ministers sign saying that uh, the, the Jewish people, they have their covenant with, with God himself, you know, Yehovah, uh, so to speak, that he, they, their covenant was him, and they don't need to be, uh, we don't need to be talking to them about the gospel of Jesus Christ or trying to win them to Christ, that they come under this covenant here. You know, that goes completely against the words of Jesus Christ when he said to them, except that you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. And so later this week, I will be going into Galatians as well. It's, we've got to get back to the, the real sincerity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I see this forsaking of the gospel and what was brought, what was once delivered to the saints, as Jude speaks about as well. And, and I could think of another better place, and right here, beginning right here with uh, the Feast of Pentecost. So we're going to be getting into that here in just a few minutes here. Uh, but also, I wanted to take and share with you guys as well. Um, and I don't know if uh, Mr. Shapira does this intentionally or whatever, but uh, what little bit I've listened to his rebuttal against me on there, and I, I haven't had a chance to go through it as of yet, uh, that and of course some people have said some things that supposedly he has said. So I don't want to accuse him of saying something that he did not say, but I, have, I did hear the part where he mentions that I had written all kinds of bad things about him, sending him messages that he was this, he was that, which is totally false. Uh, and, and maybe Mr. Shapira meant uh, what he's trying to say is that the people that follow our ministry are the ones making these comments, but he just attributes them to us. Uh, I, I have no idea. But I personally have not written uh, Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira not a single word as of yet. Um, you know, so the thing is, th those things are not true. And then, of course, there, this is what was said to me, and I don't know if it's true or not, but if it is, let me just set the record straight. Um, from what I was told, that there's been, these guys were doing an investigation on me, and I, it turns out I'm not really Jewish. Well, you know, by many uh, Orthodox rabbis today, I'm not Jewish because I believe that Jesus Christ is actually the Messiah. Uh, or maybe they search their records and they can't find me uh, bar mitzvah according to 
some particular synagogue somewhere. I don't know what their case is, but I will say this. And if you go on my website, which I don't like promoting uh, books and stuff like that, but I've written two books, uh, Israel, Are They Still God's People? Uh, because yes, I'm against replacement theology as well. And uh, Yom Suf, uh, The Final Exodus. And in, in the book there, I believe it's in Yom Suf. I don't know if it's actually in Israel, Are They Still God's People or not? But in Yom Suf, I actually talk about uh, my past. I talk about how that uh, uh, I was given my sister's father's name at birth but it wasn't my actual name. I go into this, the things that happened there, that my father was actually a Jewish man. Uh, and he, of course he comes, his family are descendants from Morocco. They went through Spain, they went through the Inquisition, uh, came out the other side, uh, uh, lived in uh, France, and then they ended up in the United States later down the road there. Uh, I've actually posted my own DNA online before you can see Jews, Jews, Jews everywhere in my family. Uh, many of them are Sep uh, Sephardic Jews. Um, I also have, have Ashkenazi Jews in my family. And my mother's side, they fled Germany because of the persecution of the Jews and came to the United States. Uh, but I did come from a family that did not practice Judaism on my mother's side either. I was bar mitzvahed in Israel though at the age of 40 years old. And uh, so I did go through a formal bar mitzvah in Israel. And, uh, but I've attended many, many synagogues. Not going to go into all the di different particular issues, things like that. But I, I told you guys this not too long ago, even before this issue ever came up with uh, uh, Rabbi Shapiro there, that there's going to be a lot of false accusations put out. Because the closer you hit the nerve of the truth, the more Satan will come against you. Uh, I was even offered, while I was at the Knesset, I was offered that they would push through my citizenship to become an Israeli citizen. All right? This is, these are the things, and many of you guys know these things. So, yeah, we're going to have a lot of false accusations and, and all types of things like that. No big deal. Don't worry about it. You know? The reason why these things are done is because Satan wants to put doubt in your mind. He wants to discredit uh, who I am or, or anything about my past, just so that they just hope that you just won't trust anything that I say. All right, that's okay, because we do serve a mighty God. And of course, my desire is, and I will say this, I say this to the people that listen to the broadcast, um, I don't want you guys to go badmouth uh, Mark uh, Biltz or Rabbi Shapira. We try to bring these things out in a very honest way in why we disagree with their approach and what they are doing. We do think it's dangerous. Now, I cannot say that Rabbi Shapira believes in the seven Noahide laws. I've not heard that from him per se. I have heard it from Mark Biltz because we were actually hoping that Mark would come on board and say, no, the, these seven Noahide laws are terrible. You know, because the problem is they come from the Talmud. And if you read what Rambam writes in the Talmud, uh, under the sub-laws of the seven Noahide laws, that the, uh, the sin of, of um, idolatry is beheading. And of course, we have played for you over and over, rabbi after rabbi after rabbi, including some of the very famous ones that these guys like to promote as well, like in the case of uh, Tovia Singer, that Christians are idolaters based on the seven Noahide laws. So how are you guys going to fix that for these people that you're trying to bring back under Judaism? All right. So, look, I don't have anything against you guys as people. And in fact, you know, because you both profess to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, my desire is that, you know, that, that, that we could come to a reconciliation of the truth of the gospel and not push Yeshua off to the side. Because it seems so obvious to me, it's not being said, but it seems obvious to me that there is this ideology that there is coming some future Messiah for Israel and it's not going to be Jesus Christ. All right. And I know that many people don't like to say the name Jesus Christ. You know, Yeshua HaMashiach. 
But the thing is, there must be a reason there, there's a fear of this name. But anyway, I've seen the dead raised in the name of Jesus Christ. I've seen the blinded eyes open in the name of Jesus Christ. So I know what I'm talking about. But anyway, let's get into this because it's really a beautiful message. And uh, like I said, this is actually, and I want to thank Sister Jennifer as well. Uh, she's a good friend of ours. The sister gets amazing revelations. But uh, she was talking to my wife earlier today, and they were discussing uh, Zechariah chapter 8 about uh, the 10 people of the nation, just paraphrasing, take hold of the of this, uh, seat of a Jew and uh, say that we hear that God is with you. Show us your ways. And this, is, this scripture is really being pushed uh, as another reason why uh, we need to be sitting under the tutorship of modern-day rabbinical teachers. And my problem is, is that the rabbinical teachers of today are still in the same situation as it was 2,000 years ago. There's been no difference. There's been no change. There's all this talk that, uh, to the Christians that they need to repent for the sins that were done for the Jews. Now, I'll agree with you that under the name of Christianity, there have been a lot of Jews killed over the years. But there's also been a lot of infiltration of Jesuits that have killed a lot of Jews as well. There have been tremendous number of Jews that went to the death camps and the Holocaust because of the Zionist movement. This is rabbis themselves exposing the crimes of the Zionist and what they were doing during World War II. And we can go on and on and on and on and on about these things all day long because it is Jews that expose the crimes that have been done over the years here. But, again, but there's also been Thousands of Christians that have loved the Jewish people, protected the Jewish people at their own life, losing their own life during the Holocaust, protecting Jews, etc. All right. So, none, nonetheless, so the, the point that, that, that I'm wanting to uh, share with you guys today, though, is we want to look at the Word of God. And I, I wanted to start because we are here at the Feast of Pentecost. And we want to look at not just the fact, as Mark was saying on Paul Begley's pr program earlier today, uh, that, that, that the Jews were keeping the Feast of Pentecost 1,500 years before the book of Acts was ever written. And it was... It was when I heard this, it was almost as if this was a greater thing than the fact of the fulfillment of Pentecost, of what happened in Acts chapter 2. You know, sure, and the Jews have been keeping Pentecost ever since, almost 2,000 years after Yeshua came and after the day of Pentecost went as well. But don't forget, if you try to say that the Jewish people of today, because this is a, a document, one of the documents that, that, that was brought out by uh, in, in this meeting down in South America, that they want ministers and messianic leaders to sign as this document that states in this document here that, uh, or one of, the, one of the points in there, is that we should not try to, to um, proselyte the Jewish community. That they already have a covenant with the God of Israel, and they basically, they don't need the message of Jesus Christ. God, I mean, that should send up warning bells for people. Jesus himself said, except that you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. You see, Yeshua himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, when he came, he was fulfilling all these prophecies all the way down from Moses and the prophets. They all prophesied of him. David prophesied. Isaiah prophesied of him. Everywhere you look, there are prophecies about Yeshua when he would come. And what he would do. He would bring the redemption to Israel. And to say that, that, that uh, the Jewish people do not need redemption. Do you really think that the blood of bulls and goats is going to take and, 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 uh, and pardon all the iniquity and sins of the people? That's contrary to the teaching of the New Testament. 
the Brit Halasha. Completely contrary to it. All right, so, and I'm going to be going into these things. I need to go, and, and we need to deal with Galatians. We need to look at the book of Jude. We need to really go through a lot of these scriptures in the Old Testament. Because it's, the people are being brought in. It's this, basically, let me just say this. The situation that I see right now going on, that Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira is part of, Mark Biltz is a part of, many of these other uh, different ministers and stuff, South America and stuff, is that there, it's only a furtherment or another part of the Mekodeshit that the Catholic Church was doing, which Mekodeshit means to engage, it's a Hebrew word, it means to engage, um, where they were doing a reconciliation, trying to bring both the Catholics and all the denominational churches together with Israel. And of course, when we were in Israel covering this as a news organization, we were there, they were around these tables here, sitting together, Muslims, Jews, and Catholics, and they were repenting to Israel for the sins and crimes that had been done against the Jewish people. All right? Now, in one way, I would say I could appreciate that. The Catholic Church has done a lot of evil to the Jewish people. I realize that. But the scripture says in Zechariah 14, excuse me, Zechariah chapter 12, they will look upon him whom they have thrust through. That is clearly speaking about Jesus Christ. And they will mourn as a family that lost its only son. And it, what is it? The house of Nathan and David and their houses apart and their wives apart. The house of uh, um, Shimei and their wives apart. The house of Levi and their wives apart. Just paraphrasing the scripture here. What is this? It's the house of Judah. Nathan and David were from the tribe of Judah. Uh, Shimei was from the tribe of Benjamin. The Levites, because there were some Levites in that day. Although there was a lot of corruption in the priesthood as well, because the Maccabees had overthrew the priesthood. Alright? No wonder why Yeshua says that you're a generation of vipers. And the problem is, is he knew that you were going to do with him and kill him and put him to death. Of course, he was the ultimate sacrifice. He had to die in order to bring about redemption. But this is what our Jewish brothers and sisters need. They need the life that was in Christ to come upon them. And then you try to say that, no, don't proselyte, don't say anything about Jesus there. You will cut off salvation to the Jewish people by doing that. And Zechariah shows that the house of Judah has to make an atonement, another not atonement, but they have to make a reconciliation with Christ. What happened 2,000 years ago? You know, in one way, they had to do what they did in order for the sacrifice to be offered. But at the same time, there has to come a, a reconciliation with Christ so that he can pardon the iniquities of our forefathers and what they did. So, this declaration that you're sending to all these ministers, and, and I really, I, I can't help but think, ministers, what is wrong with you guys? You would sign a document that says that you believe that there's no need to to try to win the souls of Jews to Christ, that they've already got a covenant with God and, they, and everything's fine, everything's hunky-dory. And would cut off their very redemption? Let's take a look at the Word of God. Exodus chapter 20. Now, Exodus chapter 20. This, had, this is why we have Shavuot, or the Feast of Pentecost, right? And Shavuot, this is when God comes down. In chapter 19, God is already coming down to Moses. And he says to Moses, prepare the people, for in three days I'm going to come down. He says, I'm going to come down and I will be in their midst. I am going to, they will be able to see me and hear me, not that you can see God and live, but the form that Moses would see, the pillar of fire, the, the rushing sound of the mighty wind and, and the trumpets that are, that are blasting. I'm going to come down and you're going to see this. That way the people will know that I am speaking with you. 
Okay? So he tells them, wash your clothes. Don't come at your wives. Make your, in other words, make yourself ready. Okay? Now, as we come along here in chapter 20, then he comes down with the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, nor any manner, uh, any manner of likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water underneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down unto them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord. Thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation, showing mercy unto the thousand generation of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless. Right? And he goes on down. Remember the Sabbath. Right? Six days you labor. Right? The seventh day is the Sabbath. We get through that. So he goes through the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and your mother. Uh, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, etc., 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 right? Now, but as, they, as he comes down, we, we find out, as the scripture goes on in chapter 20 here, Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you that his fear may be before you, that you sin not. And the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Ye yourselves have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make with me gods of silver or gods of gold. You shall not make unto you an altar of earth that shall make unto me, and shall, and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings. Right. So he goes into all these things here. But we have the one place... When we're reading this in chapter 19, chapter 20, where they cry out to Moses and they said, Let not God speak, but only Moses, lest we die. You see, God had came down. God wanted to be, He wanted to have that personal relationship with Israel. But the Israelite children, we weren't separated into two camps either at that time. House of Judah, House of Israel. We were one nation at that time. But there still were a lot of problems. God was constantly thinning out the ranks since we'd come out of Egypt. You know? And even like in the case of the speaking to the rock or, or, or smiting the rock, God, God, you know, they're, they're out there, they're complaining. Israel, I mean, from the day that the children of Israel have moved down through time, there's always been a bitter complaint and a thinning of the ranks. Because God gets angry with Israel because they never want to keep the word of God. They murmur against Moses after they come out of Egypt. They see all the signs and wonders and everything. The parting of the Red Sea. The plagues of, uh, of Egypt. And they, they're only two weeks in their journey. And then they get to, uh, to, to, to the one place there. They're crying. They say, we don't have any water to drink. You brought us out here to die. We'd be better if we'd have been left in Egypt. God says to Moses, gather the elders of Israel. Come over to this rock over here and smite the rock that it bring forth its water. Now, 38 years later, he tells him to speak to the rock. But the first time around, he tells him to smite the rock. You know, which was a type of Christ that the, how, that the children of Israel, in this case here, would be the house of Judah, that the elders of Israel, when the rock came, the rock that could give forth that water of life, would be smitten, would be judged by the elders of Israel, and then smitten that it would bring forth its water. This is why we see in Zechariah chapter 12 that when it says that they will look upon him whom they have thrust through. Now you might argue, well, the Roman soldier is the one that took the spear and drove it into his side. You know, if you know anything about law, or court cases. When I was a police officer, you know, if you arrest somebody and, and, and you've got uh, a, a drug deal went down and for some reason they shoot a guy in the process. Remember, had a situation happened like that. Guy got shot in the head. There were three suspects there. Only one guy pulled the trigger, but all three got charged with murder. Accomplice. It's the same thing that God looked at when it comes to Yeshua. The Romans would have never put him on a cross. The Romans would have never drove the spear into his side. Pilate was minded to let him go, 
But unfortunately, which actually I shouldn't say unfortunately, because if he hadn't have given his life freely, and if it had not been that the rabbis had condemned him to die, there would be no redemption. So, the blindness in part is to fulfill scripture. But there also has to come a reconciliation. The true reconciliation is not the fact that the Jews and the Christians need to come together and everybody's got to accept that the Jews, that the way they were 2,000 years ago, that the same way they are today, that everything's all hunky-dory and we need to go learn under the bunch of rabbis. Nonsense! The whole thing is, is that God is trying to get Israel to recognize what she did 2,000 years ago was wrong and that we've got to make reconciliation with Christ. You don't make reconciliation with the state of Israel or the rabbinical Sanhedrin court in Israel. Don't you realize? I'm speaking to you messianic leaders out there don't you realize that when Yeshua picked up when they give him the Isaiah scroll in Isaiah 61 and he read from the scroll this day uh, let's just pull it up the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me right when he reads from Isaiah 61 and he says right here Ruach Adonai Yehovah Ali 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 Excuse me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to bring good tidings unto the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening eyes of them that are bound, uh, excuse me, opening the eyes to them that are bound, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's good pleasure. He closed the scroll, handed it back to the priests, and he said to them when their eyes were fastened upon him, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. He did not go on to say in the, days, in the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Because that was to be fulfilled in the day you're living in now. So I ask the question today, where is the fulfillment of the mourning in the Jewish community that they have re that, that our forefathers had rejected Yeshua 2,000 years ago? And that he had went to the cross and he suffered the most heinous death that ever could have been suffered. Where has that been fulfilled? And you know, there, there's a vengeance that comes along at the same time that there's a comforting coming along. We're just skipping over that part of the word? We don't need to fulfill that. You know, you know the interesting thing is, I remember Rabbi Tovia Singer making the statement on one of his videos one day. He's in a debate. He said, out of the different groups that were there, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, he said, the Sadducees, there's no, there's no remnant of today of the Sadducees. He said, the only ones that we have a lineage to are the Pharisees. He said, the Orthodox community today are the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago. I agree with him. I believe he's right. The problem is, our people went into exile because of our own sins. Don't try to put it off on Yeshua. Don't try to put it off on his disciples, as Rambam does in the Talmud. Okay? And the thing is, now, Rabbi Shapiro, you call the Talmud our treasure. That's not my treasure. When the Talmud says, when Rambam writes in the Mishnah, which is a part of the Talmud, and he says, that Yeshua, speaking about Yeshua and his disciples, that they were the fulfillment of the scripture of Daniel chapter 11 verse 14 when it speaks about the, the violent among your people. The angel Gabriel speaking to Daniel. They will try to establish the vision, but they shall stumble. What was violent about Yeshua? What was violent about the apostles? And you call the book a treasure? Now I realize there's misquotations, like for example the issue about uh, one rabbi argues that you know if, 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 if a man were to have sex with a girl that is three years and one day old, 
Uh, it is no more than if you were to poke her uh, in her eye. It'll heal back. Now, I understand. No, the rabbi is not justifying saying that, yes, you can do this. It's free season to have pedophilia here. But the thing is, is he's making light of the crime. Same thing with homosexuality. In the Talmud, it's written, if you have sex with a boy that is nine years and one day or under, it's not considered homosexuality, or maybe it's 12 years in a day. I forget exactly which one that is. It's not considered homosexuality because the boy is not a man. And Yeshua blasted the oral law. And he says, you make the word of God of non-effect by your traditions. So did Paul. You want to know where that one is? Yeah, when Paul talks about when he's over there, I forget which book it's in there, when he's talking about, you know, uh, uh, you know, a woman is to remain silent, as also saith the law. And then Paul goes on to say, what? Did the word of God come out of you? And you only? Do you realize he's quoting from the Talmud? That's what Paul was doing? Now at that time, of course, it was only oral law, not been put into print. But it is in the Talmud that a woman's voice is a shame and should not be heard in the synagogue. This is what Paul was quoting. He wasn't quoting a Levitical law. He was quoting an oral Talmudic law. And Paul blasted the Talmud right out of the door. You know, I don't say that maybe there's not been something decent written in there. I know, I, I think, you know, okay, look. ACLU spent the last two and a half decades throwing the Ten Commandments out of all the courts here. Making way for the seven Noahide laws is what it seems to be obvious that they were doing. Now Rashi in the Talmud actually writes that, uh, that the Gentiles will actually come underneath the same mitzvot as, uh, as the, uh, the Jews do. But the Chabad organization, they say no. We'll go with Rambam's word. Rambam says, no, they get the seven Noahide laws, which are not in the scripture. Uh, you know, you make it up from, from Noah, because Noah talks about, you know, not to eat uh, something that has blood in it. So this is where you make it up, not to eat the, you know, nonsense. It's nonsense. It's Talmudic. That's what it is. It's Talmudic. Admit it. All right? But anyway, the point is, is that, the need for the salvation of Jesus Christ. For, it's, it's a redemption, brothers. Now I say this, when I say brothers, I'm talking about everywhere. Regardless of what your background is, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Christian, whether you're Messianic, whether you're Hebrew roots, whether you're Baptist, Methodist, whatever you might be, Rabbi Shapira, Mark Bills, it is redemption, my brothers. When Christ came, he didn't just come just for no reason. When they smote that rock, it was a sign to show there is something going to happen in the future. And the rock, Christ Jesus, Paul said that he was that rock. He also said he was a cornerstone that the master builders rejected. But when he would be struck, as Moses struck the rock, what happened? The water came out. When Christ, when that Roman soldier pierced his side. The blood and the water came out, separating his water from his blood. Don't you know he was sure it was a sign like the woman at the well. Yeshua goes up to the woman at the well. He says, Bring, give me a drink. She says, sir, it's not customary. You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. We have no dealings with one another. He said, but if you knew it was it was speaking to you, you'd ask me for a drink and I'd give you water. You don't have to come here no more. He was giving her a sign just like Moses gave a sign to Israel all those thousands of years ago. Moses gave that sign. When the rock would be stricken, the water would come from the side. He said to the, little, the woman, he said, you know, they got into the argument, the, theological, so to speak. You know, she's or she's the one doing the arguing. He said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I have no husband. He said, you said the truth. The one you have, you've had five, and the one you're living with now is not yours either. Sir, I believe, perceive you're a prophet. That's what the Messiah is supposed to do when he comes. What was the Messiah supposed to do? Know the secrets of the heart. You notice that? Why? Because when God stood there and spoke to Abraham and Sarah was in the tent behind him, she laughed within her own heart, never out loud. 
And the very man that was standing there with Abraham, the angel, all right, that had just partaken of food of this earth, says to what? Says to Abraham, why did your wife laugh? So that woman knew that the Messiah is gifted like that. All right? So he gave her that sign to look for. Why? Because he's the waters of life. Okay? Now, so anyway, God tells him to make ready. He's telling him to get ready for, and let's go back over to Exodus 20, to make ready. But they said, let not God come down. Let not God speak lest we die. But did you notice what was happening? Right? Did you notice the thunder, the lightning, the Russian mighty wind, so to speak, right? Let's look at the book of Acts. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. See, I like that when it was fully come. Basically at the end of Pentecost, if I understand that right. It'd be at the end of Pentecost. Same thing. God told, or excuse me, God told Moses to tell them on, in the third day, I'm going to make myself known to you. Now there's a prophecy in Hosea still yet to be fulfilled where there's going to be another outpouring of the Spirit here in the last days. Right? But anyway, he says here, the third day, make ready. Alright? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it set upon each of them. You can read it over in Exodus 19 and 20. That it was, it was like an amber fire, a pillar of fire. God came down. Here's that fire. This clo this, this, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like of a fire. And it sat upon each of them. You see, God was showing the children of Israel. Back in the days of Moses, he wanted to have a relationship with him. He wanted to be with them. He wanted to live in them. They could not receive it. Because why? Redemption. Why do we have to have a redemption? Because it was lost in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they broke that fellowship. When God, let's go, to, let's go over to Genesis real quick. We got we to gotta look at this. And a lot of this is probably... Uh, grammar school for most of you that are listening because you guys have heard this so many times, right? All right, Genesis chapter 2, right? Uh, where are we at? V verse, uh, yeah, right here, verse 7, right? Then the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, right? Right there. Afar min ha'adam ve'ipak bepa'av nishmar chayim. He breathed into his nose that chayim, the breath of life. Nishmar chayim. adam lenefesh chaya. He becomes a living soul. It's a singular. But when he breathes into him, he breathes that life in a plural. That was chayim is God's own life. Isn't it interesting? If you look, I think it's verse 9. I should know this by heart by now, right? All right. Uh, okay, here we go right here. All right. And also the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, right? betok hagon vaidon. I'm sorry. Begon ve eats I'm thinking Eden in my mind, and so I'm thinking of saying it not that's not the word for Eden, it's another tree. All right, but the point is the tree is the tree of life. Right? In the midst of the garden. Now, if God breathes in the nostrils of this clay figure called Adam, man, and he breathes in him, Chaim, and we find out in the midst of the garden is a tree of Chaim, what is the fruit of the tree of Chaim? The fruit of the tree of life is the life itself. If God breathed into Adam that life, 
then this is exactly what Yeshua was showing when he was here after the resurrection and he breathed upon his apostles before the day of Pentecost even got there he breathed upon them and he said receive you the Holy Spirit what was what was Jesus doing he was showing that he was the same God in the Garden of Eden that said that said right here uh, whoop, wrong verse sorry chapter verse 7 right here they they pak me pa'av nishmar chayim he was showing them that he was that same God. They're breathing them that breath of life. The tree of life. And so all the scriptures all the way down through. And I've even, as I explained to you guys before, what was Adam and Eve called in the beginning? Before they were even called, before God called him Adam, or well, let me just put it like this here. He called him Ish and Isha. Ad, or, uh, uh, when, when, when he takes the woman from the man, which, by the way, he doesn't have to breathe into her the breath of life. Why? Because she's already got it in her. That's why he breathed it in a plural form in Adam to start with. Chaim. Because she was filled with the Holy Spirit inside of her own husband. Just like John was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Yeah. See, God never loses those shadows and types all the way down through the Scripture. But he called her Isha. Why he says because she was taken from what? Minish. And that's so beautiful. You know, the scripture says the day will come, they will no longer call me Bali, but they will call me Ishi. That is also redemption. Why? Because Ishi shows. All right, this is one time where you can say the rabbis have got a pretty smart teaching here. They say that if you look at Ish and Isha, you have the fire, Ish. Aleph Sheen, but in Yish you have Yod in the middle, the divine name of, the first letter of the divine name. The second letter of the divine name is an Isha at the end of her name. It's Aleph Sheen He. If you take God out of the marriage, you only have a consuming fire. But when you have the fire within, it's the Holy Spirit within the Ruach HaKodesh living it inside. And so therefore, when you try to tell me that the Jews of today in Israel don't need Jesus Christ and what he had to offer, you're taking away redemption. You can't do that, brother. You can't do that, sister. That's another gospel. And, it's, and as Paul said, I am, I am so amazed that you are bewitched. And taken by another gospel, which is not a, a, a gospel. You know, sure. What was done to the Jewish people down for the last 2,000 years? I, I hate that, that, that they went through it. My family went through it as well. We have people on the Yad Vashem Memorial as well. All right? But the thing is, is regardless, so I have come to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is indeed the Mashiach. In Israel, the, under the Jewish traditions, we've had a lot of people we thought was the Mashiach. There's only one that laid his life down was able to raise it up again. There's only one that the scriptures prophesied of that Yeshua fulfilled every single one of them to the letter. Alright? Now, so, let's see. I was over here in Genesis. Let's go back over here. Now, I want to show something to you now. Let's go to Zechariah. This is the beautiful one. Hmm. I'm going to back up a little bit before we get to verse 21. Let's read a little bit of this. Let's go start with verse 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful season. Therefore, love you truth and peace. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come peoples and the inhabitants of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many peoples and mighty nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, shall even take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. 
All right. Now, I've even taught before that I believe that this could be the two witnesses that they take hold of the, the skirt of the, of the Jew. But I had not really paid attention to the reading of it in Hebrew. And then, of course, Sister Jennifer tells my wife, you need to go have your husband show you in there. It's the word ish. Yeah, ish Yehudi. Ish Yehudi, right? A Jewish man. All right? And it doesn't say he's going to take hold of the tzitzit. The tzitzit is written all the way through the scriptures here. So we know what tzitzit, when you see the word tzitzit, you know the word tzitzit. Bikanaf, Bikanaf is not a tzitzit. It is the wing of your garment. Now, it is believed or assumed in this case by uh, teachers today that it is speaking of the tzitzit because Moses commanded that the tzitzit be uh, attached to the kanaf of your garment. Now, kanaf is wings. It is wings, your arms. Okay? Now, the thing is, was then the tzitzit attached to the sleeves or is it part of the, the garment has, you know... See, the thing is, the rabbis today, they say that we put tzitzit on the four corners of the garment. Moses never said put it on the four corners of the garment. He just said put it on the kanaf of your garment, or the kanafim, right? But in this case right here, let's look at what he actually says here, all right? Now, they're going to take hold, be kanaf ish yehudi lemor, all right? You're gonna, they're going to take hold in the wing of a Jewish man. What? They're going to take hold of the wing of a Jewish man? Saying, okay, Lemor, Nelacha Imchem, okay, we will go with you, Nelacha, okay, we will go, Imchem, with you. Now we got a plural. Kisha ma'anu, okay, for we have heard Elohim imchem. God is with you. But you know, the problem is, what a lot of people are now looking at, is the Ish Yehudim. That's a Jewish man. It doesn't say Ishim Yehudim. There's no pluralization of this sentence here. This is a prophecy of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. It's got to be. And we're putting it in the future. Now, I don't doubt that there, can't, that there could be a compound fulfillment, but still, it is a single Jewish man, and because of the result of the Jewish man, they say, we hear that God is with you. All right, now, with that in mind, keeping in mind that we are looking in Zechariah's prophecy, let's take a look at the book of Acts again. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as one a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven. What do you know? Now when this noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? The miracle here is not an unknown tongue. It was when they spoke they could hear hear in their own language. What did Yeshua say? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Right? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, uh, Phrygia, and uh, I, you know, we'll go, I can't even say half these names, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, and Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. 
And they were all amazed and went up and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up in the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing this is but yet the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Now he's getting to that what? That Ish Yehudi, that Jewish man. Him being delivered by the de uh, determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken by wicked hands and crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it, it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, for I, for I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Wow. You ought to go look at what David actually said. Then you know who Yeshua really is. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you and patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore being a prophet and knowing that the God had sworn with him an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection, right, of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but saith to him, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on, on my right hand, until I make thy uh, thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Notice the house of Israel. You ain't got to bring nobody back, Shapira. You ain't got to bring nobody back, Mark Biltz. See? He had already sent his apostles to the house of Israel. Now, I believe there is a compound fulfillment, but again, it's still in Christ. And these brothers that are over there in South America already believe Jesus Christ. Let them alone. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto him, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you, unto your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And you want to say that don't take this beautiful gospel to the Jewish brethren in Israel? Don't take it to the Jews when it's the life-giving salvation, when it is the fulfillment of Zechariah chapter 8. They will take hold of the wing of the, that man, that Jewish man. Why? Because they heard that God is with them. Because why? The day of Pentecost was fulfilled. They see that that Russian mighty wind, they see that what God was doing with Moses and the children of Israel, when the children of Israel rejected the presence of Almighty God and said, not let God not speak, but only Moses speak. And they took a counter way of God dealing with the children of Israel, only through a prophet, when redemption was to put that life back in you. Oh my gosh, what a redemption if I ever seen one. 
Psalm 36. Let me show you this one here. How precious is thy loving kindness, O God. The children of men take refuge in the shadow of thy wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Thou makest them drink of the river of, thy, of thine pleasures. For thee is the fountain of life. In thy light do we see in, 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 in thy light do we see light. Again, the shadow of his wing is Christ Jesus. There it is. He is the fountain of life, is he not? He is that light. Do we see? Do we see light? Oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee in thy heart, thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Where is that fulfilled at? Let's show you. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was what? The light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. That goes back to Genesis chapter 1 as well. He is the light. He is the life. You know, I love my brothers. I love my sisters that are Jewish. And I don't believe in replacement theology. But I do believe that if they don't recognize Yeshua as He's... Let me, let's just pull this one up so you know. Believe I am He. All right. John chapter 8 verse 24. You can go back to Isaiah 42 and see the same thing if you really pay attention if you know your scripture. All right? So let's go to John chapter 8. Let's go to verse 24. Oop. Pull it up. John Chapter 8, verse 24. And he said unto them, let me, let, me, let me back up just a little bit. Then said Jesus again, into, well, let's back up a little more. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me. You shall die in your excuse me, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whether I go, you cannot come. And he said unto them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are, you are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that you shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am He. And actually the word He is not there, except that you believe that I am. When God spoke to Mo, oh my gosh, you shall die in your sins, except that you believe, for if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. They said, Unto him, who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto to you from the beginning. I have many things to say unto you, say, and to judge of you. But, they, the, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. All right, now let me just conclude here. Because he said, Except that you believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. Now where is he taking that from? That's even from Exodus as well. And let's just go over here, and we're going to read just a little bit. And I'll read it in Hebrew for the sake of the rabbis that might listen to this as well. All right. Let's go. Let's scroll down here. Okay. Okay. <speaking in Hebrew> Veyomer Moshe Moshe Veyomer Hineni Veyomer Al Tikarav Chalum Shelna Alecha Me Aureglecha Kiamakum Ashar Atam Omed Aliav Adamat Kodeshu 
See, the ground that you're standing on is a holy ground. Ve'yomer anochi Elochai Avicha, Elochai Avraham, Elochai Yaakov, excuse me, Yitzhak, Ve'elochai Yaakov. Ve'yaster Moshe, Penav Kiyore, Mehabit El Ha'Elohim. Ve'yomer Yehovah Wa'araiti, Et Ani Ami Asha B'Mitzchayim, Ve'et Sakatam Shemati Mipne Negashav. Ki yadati et ma, excuse me, ma ko'ovav. They, you know, actually, let me go further down. All right, because he's going to talk about, because uh, I'm just, I, I, maybe I should just do this in English, it might be a little bit easier, and then I'll just read the rest of it in, in English for you in just a second, I mean, Hebrew in a second there. Now behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me. Moreover, I have seen the oppression wherein the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee and to Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token of thee, that I, will, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mount. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? All right. What shall I say unto them? All right. Let's just pick it up. Elohai avatechem shalachani eleyachem veamruli mashemo. They will say to me, What is his name? Mashemo. Maomelechem. What do I say to them? Ve'yomer el Elohim el Moshe, I haye asha I haye. Ve'yomer kota amar livne Yisrael I haye shalachani el yachem. Tell them, see, tell them, I am that I am, and and go on to say to amar livne Yisrael, right, and say to the children of Israel or the sons of Israel. I am Shalachani Eliachem has sent thee. I am. And what did Yeshua say over here? I kind of drug it out. I probably shouldn't have read as much as I did there. I apologize. He said here, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. See, the whole point was, why was Yeshua saying that? Just like it was with the case of Moses. God said to, told Moses, go tell them, I am sent you. And if they didn't believe, if they had not have believed Moses in that day, that I am had spoke to them, they would have died right there in Egypt with the Egyptians. Especially when the plague of death came through. And so Yeshua was saying the same thing. The only difference is now he is the Lamb of God. So redemption is paramount. It's essential. Yeshua. Without Yeshua HaMashiach, and we're talking about Jesus Christ. Because right now these rabbis can say Yeshua HaMashiach and they may not even be referring to Jesus Christ. Because you see, that can easily be passed off for a future Messiah that, they're, that the Jewish nation is looking for now. You see, I love my people. I want my people to know who the Messiah really is. And I'm not willing to compromise and take another gospel that, by the way, that is the true... Right now, you guys are majorly involved of fulfilling that scripture over in Daniel and the prophecy of Daniel there. And I'll just quickly run over there to Daniel to, to bring that out. You know, this prophecy that Rambam blamed on Yeshua, Daniel's prophecy, chapter 11, verse 14, last half of the verse where he says right here, um, where is it at here? 
Right here. Right here. Uvane paratzi amcha. And the, and the sons of the lawless of your people, Daniel, he's talking to Daniel, they will try to lift up the vision, the violent among your people. And they blame this on Yeshua, Jesus, and his apostles. Show me what was violent about Jesus. There was nothing. Even when Peter went to cut the high priest's servant's ear off, Yeshua healed the man. He said, do you not know I could call and ask my father right now for ten legions of angels and they'd be granted to me right there. That wasn't what he came for. Vengeance, it wasn't that hour. But today, we do see in the national state of Israel, they're willing to bring about these prophecies, including with violence. The Middle East is funded with wars. America is involved in wars, fighting wars at the bidding of Prime Minister Netanyahu, the encouragement, taking down Iran, taking down Iraq, now Syria. Everywhere, everywhere you look, there is violence. Among what? The violent of your people, Daniel. They're trying to establish this vision. There's even talk amongst the very ones here in South America now about Edom, and Edom is going to be destroyed. Well, no doubt Edom will be destroyed, but the problem is the believers in Jesus Christ are not Edom. We're going to teach who really Edom is in the very near future. I'm Stephen Benoon. If this message is a blessing to you, support the work we're doing. We need your help. Visit our website, israelinewslive.org, our mailing address here at the bottom of your screen. You can also join us on Patreon. In fact, this is where the Stephen Yana chats will be airing. Um, we're still considering airing them live on Israeli News Live, but then we will move them to Patreon immediately after the live broadcast is up. Just so you're aware that it's there, and that way those that watch live will be able to catch it live. Um, again, I do ask, uh, we can disagree with, with people as far as the East is from the West, but try not to use hateful language against these people. Uh, you know, I've already got from what someone was, uh, well, actually, I heard this for myself, you know, uh, Rabbi Shapiro was saying that I wrote and called him all kinds of things. Uh, I never wrote him anything. But maybe he's implying what other people that have followed our, our ministry, that maybe people have been going and saying things to him, and he's applying that as if it's me saying it, which is not the case. I've not written him one single word. What I say here. He's able to hear. Just like I'm able to hear his stance, he's able to hear my stance. All right? So we know where we both stand already. Um, and what they're trying to do, I believe, is very, very serious. This is not a light thing. I really believe that we're coming to the day right now, the fulfillment of the Scripture where Yeshua says that the, the weed and the tares that at the end, when the reapers are ready to come for the harvest, that he will separate the weeds, the tares, from the wheat. And they will be gathered together in bundles. I have never in my life seen a division before where we are seeing those in the different ranks of Christian world binding themselves together and binding to the secular state of Israel and underneath rabbinical teachers saying that this is where the true word of God comes from. I just showed you tonight, Pentecost was fulfilled in Christ. Zechariah's prophecy chapter 8 is fulfilled in Christ. God with them was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. This is where it was under the shadow of his wing, taking a hold of his kanaf. Please don't be deceived, friends. Don't be deceived. And I implore you, Mark and Yitzhak, I implore you, 
please examine the Word of God. Know the truth of the Gospel. Don't lead people astray. You guys are, uh, people know you all over the world. If I make a mistake, I am always humble enough to come and say, look, I made a mistake. And even on this Zechariah, I used to think, like I said, there's the two witnesses. It was just my conjecture on it. But now, with the revelation, I know who it is. It's Christ. Pray about it, friends. We are working on a coalition as well. We don't want just ministers and stuff signing some kind of document or pledge we're wanting all the believers to come together to pledge to stand with Jesus Christ they say that I'm anti-semitic because I believe the truth of the gospel I don't hate my people but I refuse to allow someone because they have a different belief to take away the gospel message that brings redemption to both the house of Judah and the house of Israel. And there will only be a remnant that will believe it. That is true. You know, I've shared with you guys in private meetings that you guys are not aware of. But those that are in the private meetings, they can tell you. We knew almost at the very beginning of our ministry. We didn't know how, what part of this was going on, but we knew even the names of those leaders that were put out there to bring about this covenant between all, bringing all Christians under Judaism. At that time, we didn't know for sure how it was going to work out, but we did know specifically who they were. And before any of this stuff here got started, I was already telling you guys who they were. Think about it. I'm Stephen Benoom. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov. I'd love to say Shalom, but we live in a world of ain't Shalom. Jesus says when they say to you, peace and safety, don't believe it, because sudden destruction will come.